Thank you, Frederick. It's an honour to be speaking at this uh, symposium. And um, uh, I'd also like to thank uh, our hosts uh, for the opportunity to uh, be in what a, such a wonderful city. So my brief was to talk about the, the wave sign. And this is characterised by delamination of the articular cartilage at the level of the chondrolabial junction. And what we uh, know is that it represents outside in damage, typically caused by force to the articular cartilage via the acetabular labrum. And we owe it to Martin Beck, who described it as a carpet lesion, and I, I see it as a carpet bubble sign. So I started this uh, talk by trying to understand how does carpet bubble. So um, in terms of background, carpet has four layers, and the layers of the carpet are held, to, held together by latex. The latex is made up of clay and marble dust. And when this absorbs water, so if you spill a cup of water onto your carpet, the uh, marble dust and clay absorbs that water and expands, and this leads to the carpet to bubble. So how do we fix it with glue and pressure? And we'll apply that later on to the treatment of this lesion. Let's look at the basic science of cartilage. We know it is composed uh, predominantly of water and chondrocytes, proteic lichens, and collagen. And uh, the predominant collagen is type 2. Uh, and we know the articular cartilage is uh, at attached to the subchondral cartilage via the calcified cartilage layer. So in the wave sign, we get detachment at the level of the um, tide mark. And the articular cartilage mechanical properties are therefore compromised, leading it to more, make it more susceptible to mechanical wear. There was a number of studies that have been undertaken, but this is one I quote, where the viability of these chondral flaps were assessed, and uh, in this series, 90% uh, of chondrocyte viability were identified in 11 of the 12 uh, hips assessed. And um, where does this damage typically occur? We know it occurs typically uh, at the chondral label junction, as described by Richard Field um, in two, 2011. And uh, we know this is an intrinsic weak point of the um, uh, acetabular chondral label junction, particularly at the anterior aspect. So this led to Bob Boulay further investigating to come with an answer as to why the anterior segment is being damaged more commonly than the posterior segment. And what he, dis he, he alluded to in his paper was that uh, the orientation of the collagen fibers were more parallel uh, at the anterior superior aspect of the, the, um, the uh, chondral label junction. And posteriorly, these fibers were orientated more perpendicular. So this made the anterior segment uh, more susceptible to shear stress and more vulnerable to damage, which is reflected in what we see in clinical practice. Uh, Martin Beck uh, uh, really uh, simplified things and made it easy for us all to understand that the patterns of damage were, were, were uh, very reproducible in cam lesions anterior superiorly and in pincer lesions, particularly global pincer lesions, getting circumferential damage to the articular cartilage. And this is what we uh, see arthroscopically. When assessing patients for specifically wave signs, it's very difficult to make this diagnosis purely on clinical and radiological grounds. And uh, um, I think the gold standard of diagnosing a wave sign remains arthroscopically where you probe the chondral label junction and you can look for the, the signs of a wave. And uh, these, uh, this wave sign can be localized or much more uh, uh, widespread, as you can see on this case on the, on, on the right. Once you've made this diagnosis arthroscopically, the next uh, uh, point in treatment is to uh, classify this lesion uh, to, to help formulate a um, treatment plan. And being, you know, ex-UK um, trainee moving to Australia, cannot, I've been following Brexit closely, and it seems like they can't come to any kind of agreement as to what should happen. And likewise, with the classification systems, the, there is no universal agreement. Being this part of the afternoon, I thought it would have a bit of light humour just to keep us all awake. The British people want a good deal that sets us on course for a brighter future. That deal is within our grasp, and I am determined to deliver it. Fortunately, uh, um, in Australia, John's taken the role on of Theresa May and come to some consensus, which I'll share with you shortly. So um, the classification system started with a Victor Lillisori, uh, who described an anatomical based uh, classification system, but didn't really go on to tell us about uh, you know, how we're going to treat this condition or the prognosis. 
And we, we're all familiar with the Arterbridge classification, and the problem with this is it's uh, based on a knee classification system, although we do translate this to the hip. The, the ICRS classification describes the depth of the um, cartilage lesion, but is not specific to the hip. And we have Martin Beck's group to thank for uh, who have been the first uh, in the world to describe uh, a hip classification system. And uh, he described the, the wave sign, the carpet lesion, as a grade two. Uh, and this has been widely adopted around the world. So uh, uh, Conan and Haddad in, in London felt that improvements could be made in the classification system. And the deficiencies were that didn't really help us with the prognosis. So what um, the Conan Haddad system used was um, bits of the uh, Victor Lerzuri classification, they used uh, Martin Beck's uh, group's classification, and in addition, they added the extent of the damage, which is what, we, what reflects what we see during hip arthroscopy. And he defined the lesion as uh, of cartilage um, delamination as less than a third, uh, one third to two thirds, or greater than two thirds. Uh, uh, and this is measured from the junction of the chondral labral junction to the cotyloid fossa. And, uh, uh, John O'Donnell, Donald, alias Theresa May, all due respect, um, has uh, helped us and say and, and concluded that the Haddad classification has uh, been shown to be the, the best in, um, in terms of reliability between observers. Uh, as with a lot of things in hip arthroscopy, I do look to the people who've done this for the longest, and Tom Sampson is, 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 is clearly one of those surgeons, and I actually spoke to him before uh, this presentation in preparing it, and he told me about his classification system, which helps um, classify the lesion and helps us also with the treatment and prognosis. And the bit we're interested in for this, class, for this talk is the wave sign. And um, he grouped the, the wave sign um, uh, pathologies um, in terms of uh, whether the uh, labral chondral junction was intact or torn, and whether this was associated with cartilage delamination or no delamination. And his treatment algorithm was uh, pr pretty similar for this lesion, where he took down the, uh, the labrum, he performed microfracture and stabilized this junction with sutures. One could argue this, this, this may, or may, not be too, may, may, or be, may or may not be too aggressive. So uh, th this is an example of a, a chondrolabal junction that's destabilized with a wave sign and simply by putting suture anchors to stabilize the conjugal junction, uh, we can have a debate whether that's uh, sufficient to control uh, this pathology. And that's the sort of least aggressive treatment. So what other options do we have available to treat a wave sign? Well, what about fibrin glue? We heard from Chuck about fibrin glue. We know it uh, adheres the laminated cartilage to the subchondral bone. We know it encourages uh, the migration and proliferation of chondrocytes in damaged cartilage. And it's at least comparable, if not superior, to co uh, cartilage sacrificing techniques. The results of this uh, technique have been reported by Richard Villa's group in two series, where he showed reproducible results showing significant improvement in pain, function, um, and modified Harris hip scores. What about um, a surgical technique? Um, one of the things that I noticed using the the, the needle, it often bends, and you can pre-bend the tip to help guide the, uh, the, the fibrin glue in. But what I started doing was using the rigid curette and, and tipping, uh, putting the tips of the needle into this, and this helps guide the needle very precisely, and you can inject the glue very precisely without um, uh, too much difficulty. But what about the risks of fibrin glue? Recently, there was uh, uh, two case reports of uh, septic arthritis following fibrin glue, so it's not without... Uh, risk and the reason for this is that uh, the fibrin glue does come from pooled human plasma and therefore carries the risk uh, of viral infection and this is um, being confirmed by Baxter who provide the, uh, the materials. What about alternatives to fibrin glue? There's uh, cyanoacrylate says uh, increased uh, interest in this uh, product. Uh, the additional benefit it has is it's bacteria static as well as the um, material properties of, of fibrin glue. And the probably one we're most familiar with is Dermabond, the one we use to close skin. This is a biomechanical study performed in cadavers. And what they did was, um, in 2015, uh, use fibrin compared to um, cyanacrylate and uh, suture anchor repair. And uh, this study shows 
the intra-articular intra cadaveric specimen shown that after 25 cycle, fibrin was delaminating. With the uh, cyanocrylates, the, the, the chondral uh, area was failing after 100,000 uh, cycles. Oh, what's happened? It's gone blank, the screen, is it? Still going? OK. Um, so uh, and then they analyzed the, um, uh, the, the impact of just suturing, purely suturing the articular cartilage. And what they found was that the sutures were inevitably cutting out after uh, 50 cycles. So none of our repair techniques are perfect. And here's the example of suture uh, cutting out. And they performed a survival analysis based on this cadaveric study and showing that fibrin uh, was the most hopeless uh, repair and the suture anchors, uh, the suturing the cartilage had the most durable repair. So what other techniques do we have available? Uh, there's the anti-grade microfracture technique that Tom Sampson described, and more recently, uh, there's a, a reverse microfracture technique uh, described because all of us will be aware it's, it, it can be quite difficult to microfracture behind a large dynamic cartilage uh, uh, purely for access regions, and that uh, prompted this technique of reverse microfracture technique. And uh, the additional step in this technique is you need a proximal uh, anterolateral portal and, the, and, and you use a drill to perform a microfracture, uh, taking care not to penetrate the chondral surface. Uh, the limitations of this technique is that if you have a very small wave sign or very small acid tabulum, then it can be quite hard to precisely drill it in the zone of the injury, and you also risk uh, injury to the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Now, what about microfracture in general? We know uh, a two by two centimeter uh, lesion, which is a typical size we see in uh, femoral acid tabular impingement syndrome, um, we would routinely microfracture this or micro drill this, but we must not forget it can cause damage to the subchondral plate. And uh, Marchand defined this as 14.7%. And uh, if uh, you have damage to your subchondral plate, uh, plate and you're using awls to compact the subchondral bone, you increase the risk of subchondral cyst formation and dome cysts. So, how can you avoid this? Well, you can use drilling, but that can cause thermal necrosis. And more recently, we've had uh, the use of nanofracture uh, techniques, which uh, may hopefully avoid all these issues. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, chairman, the literature is very limited uh, uh, to low-level evidence uh, with lack of control groups comparing uh, different treatment options. Current best evidence does not support one treatment over another. Uh, however, the methods described uh, in this talk do show predictable improvement in pain, function, and modified high-risk hip scores. Uh, John's concluded that uh, the Haddad classification is probably the uh, uh, most reliable in terms of reliability is the best. However, I do uh, recommend you read Samson's classification uh, also. While suture anchor has been shown to be the uh, most biomechanically sound, the clinical evidence for this is based on one case report. So, uh, uh, and uh, the work by Villa uh, uh, et al. Uh, clearly uh, seems to be the most reproducible and most reliable to date. Thank you for your attention.